temporary workers. The company is hoping to reduce labor costs. A former aide to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is speaking to impeachment committees behind closed doors on Capitol Hill today. Michael McKinley, who resigned last week, is a career foreign service officer and was Pompeo's de facto chief of staff. Republicans, though, are upset with the process, and House Minority Whip Steve Scalise says Democrats are acting shamefully. Why are they trying to impeach a president of the United States behind closed doors in secret? Where the public can't see it, the press can't see it, even now members of Congress that aren't on the committees of jurisdiction can't even go read the testimony. At the White House this morning, President Trump said he was hopeful that Turkey would agree to a ceasefire in its military assault on Kurdish fighters in Syria. We're watching and we're negotiating and we're trying to get Turkey to do the right thing because we'd like to stop wars regardless whether Americans are in or whether they're not in. Uh, we want to see war stop. That's a very important thing on a humanitarian basis. Vice President Pence is leading a U.S. delegation to Turkey tomorrow for talks with the Turkish president. Stocks lower. Dow is down 18 points. More at townhall.com. Oh, wow! It can't be. Oh, yes, yes, yes! Oh, where have you been? If you snore, the first time you use mute can be quite an experience. <laughs> I can breathe! I can breathe! Snoring can happen when your nose is blocked, forcing you to breathe through your mouth. Mute is a comfortable nasal breathing device designed to increase airflow through the nose by gently opening the airways. <laughs> Thanks to Mute, you get all the air you need through your nose and not your mouth, which means less snoring and more chance of sleep. Oh, that's the best night I've had in years. In trials, 75% of couples reported a reduction in snoring when using Mute. Available at Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid and other fine stores. To find your local store or for more information, go to MuteSnoring.com. Mute. Breathe more. Snore less. Sleep better. U.S. sanctions don't seem to be hurting Chinese tech giant Huawei, at least not yet. Huawei reports a double-digit sales gain, although the sanctions do threaten to disrupt its smartphone and network equipment business in the future. The company sales soared 24% in the first nine months of the year to $86 billion. The Trump administration considers Huawei a security risk and imposed curbs in May on its access to American technology and components. Rich Thomason reporting. Game four of the AL Championship Series scheduled for tonight has been postponed because of rain in the forecast. The Houston Astros and New York Yankees will play game four tomorrow night instead. Houston leads the series two games to one. Last night, the Washington Nationals punched their ticket to the World Series by defeating the St. Louis Cardinals in the NL Championship. News and analysis at townhall.com. I'm Greg Clugston. Some conservatives aren't happy with how CNN moderators handled the Ukraine questions involving former Vice President Joe Biden at last night's Democratic debate. For Anderson Cooper to suggest from the get-go in his question saying there are false allegations against your son how do you respond to that that's really not a legitimate question in a debate the question is here are the facts here's what's been alleged how do you respond genevieve wood is spokeswoman for the heritage foundation scientists have discovered a mashup of two feared disasters hurricanes and earthquakes they're calling them storm quakes it's a shaking of the sea floor during a hurricane that rumbles like a magnitude 3.5 earthquake. The quakes weren't noticed before because they were considered seismic background noise. The study's lead author says it's more an oddity than something that can hurt you. More on these stories at townhall.com. The following is an America Matters media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters media. Hello, welcome to Talking Truth to Power. Uh, this is our, um, our morning edition of Freedom Talk Radio. Another episode. Another episode, yes. 
And uh, we are uh, proud to be with you today because our president has finally spoken truth to power just like we do every week. Every, here, every yes. week here on KCKQ. Yes. And uh, also we stream globally at uh, www.americamatters.us. And uh, what I'm happy about, uh, despite the cloudy overcast uh, day <laughs> today, is that um, uh, President Trump has really reaffirmed his commitment to ending wars with some reservations. But he did say that it's hard to do, that it's hard to overcome the uh, disposition to war. Uh, but um, he uh, was extremely firm, and I found that uh, really invigorating. Not to mention the neoconservative resistance. Oh, yes. I mean, they they came out of the woodwork. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And but even Lindsey Graham has sort of rolled over. Yes. Uh, Lindsey was he's very He's a little more comfortable now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, supposedly he saw a letter that Trump uh, said he didn't want Erdogan to uh, attack Syria. And, um, you know, he's very careful to say that what a lot on the left won't say, and that is that the Kurds are not angels. And, you know, we, nobody we is in note. the world of politics. Taking notes on this. Yeah. Kurds <laughs> are, not are not angels. angels. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, they were an ally, but as he said over and over again, um, the uh, Kurds were actually self-interested. It was uh, an, a, a partnership between two self-interested parties. Uh, America was there uh, supposedly to defeat ISIS, although that's questionable because how much fighting against ISIS did the America and the Kurds actually do in that mm -hmm. part of Syria? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, extreme north, north, yeah, uh, right. west part of the country. Yeah, they they apparent they actually did very little uh, compared to uh, what Hezbollah and Iran and uh, the Syrian Sy Arab Army Syria did. Syria itself, yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, they they coexisted with ISIS for months at a time without barely lifting a finger. And could that be the public relations arm of the, the strategists that got us in there in the first place? Yes. You know, I mean, that was clearly the objective was to boot Assad for some strange reason, like he, yes. was, a, like he was a problem to us. Yes. <laughs> what exactly and, did yeah. Assad do, ever do to us? <laughs> I know. Actually, he was uh, at one time considered a friendly antagonist, or I think that's the word they use for it, uh -huh. and, uh, because he accepted... Um, Comfortable with religious sect uh, sectarianism and that sort of thing? No, he accepted rendition uh, uh, from the CIA. They sent him uh, uh, prisoners to be tortured. <laughs> <laughs> So he oh, was a nice, better. a nice protagonist. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, but um, the uh, the Kurds, uh, we were introduced to the Kurds when the the attack on Kobani by ISIS, their the city in northern in the the main city that they have, and uh, we bombed the uh, Raqqa the city in the eastern part, mm -hmm. to smithereens. I mean, I remember when the left was all upset about uh, Fallujah, you know, I remember, and uh, libertarian candidate uh, Gary Johnson couldn't remember what Fallujah was. And <laughs> no, that was Aleppo he couldn't remember. Oh, Aleppo, okay. But, yeah, Aleppo. But the same kind of thing. Yeah, Aleppo. Fallujah was its counterpart in Iraq yeah. at, at another period, mm -hmm. as was Mosul. And when America bombed Mosul in Iraq and then uh, we bombed Raqqa, we, we obliterated it. We did like the Romans did to Carthage. We might as well have sowed salt over the earth after we did it. Mm -hmm. there, those cities are still in, in uh, rubble. And uh, Fallujah is uh, being rebuilt. And the, Assad is inviting more Syrians to come back and live there. So uh, it's... You know, we keep projecting our own faults on other people in order to justify our well, own we actions. Do. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, so uh, the Kurds have been fighting uh, for uh, at least thirty years against uh, in Turkey uh, for their independence, their dream of a Kurdistan state. And they can be found throughout the region. Yes, not just in that northwestern part of Syria. But they're across In Iraq, Turkey, Turkey, Iraq, they're everywhere. Northern Iraq, yeah. The place is crawling Our parts with Kurds. of Iran, yeah. yeah. And uh, they ethnically cleanse people. They kill people. I mean, they are a terrorist group. 
they have uh, been uh, murdering people. They fight among themselves. There are different factions among the Kurds, so they're not united in their quest for independence. And uh, there, you know, it was simply, I heard a, a retired general on C-SPAN, it uh, said so uh, outright um, that I saw that he said that it was a transactional alliance. So we have those all the times. So we have common goals, Medle and when those goals are met, we... Med meddling yeah. requires it. Yes, it does, <laughs> which is what Tulsi said. What's happening to the Kurds is a symptom of what's going on with our regime change wars. You can't have uh, regime change wars and have a perfect, uh, outcome, just like in uh, North Vietnam, for the you know we propped up that government even though it was corrupt and mm -hmm. uh, and even though the communists uh, were communists, but they were more organized and they they were nationalists too. They and, were fighting for their country, and we didn't have a stake in the region, right? And we and we didn't declare the war, right? Which is required by the constitution. Yes, Assad is the legitimate ruler of the Syrian state. The UN has declared that. Uh, they have declared that Assad is the legitimate ruler. There, it was not a civil war. Anybody that was there in Syria without the permission of Assad was an outlaw. This ugly chapter uh, is beginning to peel away, and it's a good thing. That right. And all of this has happened. Yes. You know, prior to uh, our involvement that should not have been an involvement, um, we, we now face the prospects of going into a future without an entanglement that we should have never gotten involved with in the first place. Right. And, you know, we shouldn't be getting involved in situations that are not in our vital interest and which involve so much, uh, you know, nego uh, an inability to extricate ourselves from easily. And all for the purpose of transnationalism. Right. Globalism. Yes. There's that word again, the G word. <laughs> Novus Ordo Secor. Right. <laughs> We'll be back. Join the Funtime Theater this fall as we make the history of the Comstock come alive with Voices from the Past, a walking tour of the Silver Terra Cemetery in Virginia City. Each year, 12 actors portray past residents of the Comstock, sharing their life and death in the Old West. Shows are Saturday and Sundays, September 28th through October 13th at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. daily. Visit FuntimeTheater.com to make your reservations and use promo code RADIO for $5 off each adult admission. That's FuntimeTheater.com, promo code RADIO. Home at Last opens doors to family, to freedom, to finally making it yours. Home at Last, a program of the Nevada Rural Housing Authority, opens doors to rural home buyers with incomes of up to $135,000, providing down payment assistance of more than $22,000, plus access to our exclusive pet adoption program. From Gardnerville to Fernley to Carson City and even Sparks, rural happens here in every county in Nevada. Learn more at homeatlastnv.org. As humans, we ask ourselves all kinds of questions. But what if we were forced to ask ourselves a question every day that affected the outcome of the most basic things, the most important things in our lives? The question is, what is your sexual orientation or gender identity? And the answer is the difference between keeping your job or getting fired. The answer is the difference between staying in your home or getting evicted. The answer is the difference between receiving medical treatment or not. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against people based on their answer to this question. LGBT Americans have the right to say, I do, but they don't have the same basic rights as everyone else. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Hey, Dr. Phil here. I help people solve difficult and trying personal problems every day on my TV show, but there's one problem that just got me stumped. Childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. That's one in five kids who may not know where their next meal is coming from, despite the fact that there's more than enough healthy, nutritious food out there to feed them all. Now, I don't know about you, but that is unacceptable to me. Luckily, the Feeding America network of good people is out there collecting surplus food and giving hope to hungry children and their families at local food banks all across the country. 
But let's face it, they can't do it without your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus broadcast station. The power of radio since 1967. Unable to listen to the whole show? A recording of today's program will be available later today. Visit americamatters.us and click on the podcast link. Now, back to the show. All right, and welcome back once again to Talking Truth to Power, Nevada's Freedom Talk Radio. I am your host, Brendan Trainer, my co-host, Leland Fagri, and I'm sorry, I may have forgotten to introduce us in the first segment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think they know who, who we who are, we are yeah. Probably a lot of people know who we are by now. Uh, so, uh, the Donkey Derby was on parade last night. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was know, something, wasn't it? Yep, and uh, yeah, I know we have a little sign here, but it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have to should remind the, ourselves. Uh, they all, most of them, succeeded in making A's of themselves <laughs> during the uh, debate last night. Yeah, I had uh, on last week's show. I had mentioned that I would probably tune in because Tulsi was going to mm -hmm. be a participant, and I think in ten minutes' time, and I, the show was competing. The so-called debate was competing with the National League championship series so i was back and forth <laughs> okay and uh every time i went over there to the so-called debate which is just a forum really it's, we shouldn't even call them you no know, it's, it's not pathetic debate, really. no uh they'd be interesting if they were debates yeah and, she uh, tried she tried to have no she did yeah. no to her credit she did she yeah. did a great she was the best up there um but i i just every time i went there i think i went there three or four times in 10 minutes and every time i saw robert bethel <laughs> Did I say Robert? I meant Bethel. Okay. And uh, who else did I see? Uh, Warren. She uh -huh. seemed to be featured in the debate. And it, I just thought, oh, my God, I just can't tolerate that. So I, I just know. I left it's so it hard. Away. It's yeah. so hard to sit through listening to them. There's really nothing going on there. <laughs> and I, as I understand it this morning, the journalistic profession was or is uh, apparently very, very disappointed by last night's forum. Oh, really? Candidates forum. Mm. So... So and even they weren't impressed, uh -huh. uh, which lends itself to a, a further discussion about the likelihood of someone who is not on the stage entering the race, which we've been broaching um, for several weeks now, whether it's, you know, a, a, a sitting governor like Newsom in California or Hillary, who has pretty much indicated that she's never been out of the race. That's what, what she's been saying yeah. over the past week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you guys not think I was running? You know, that's, that's going to be her approach going mm -hmm. forward here, it looks mm -hmm. like. And uh, it, it, it needs it. I mean, it needs a shot in the arm. There needs to be some blood on that stage. Yeah. And there isn't any now. No. And, uh, you know, Moody's, uh, which has predicted uh, every yeah. recent election correctly, mm -hmm. except for 2016, uh, has said that if, as long as the economy is relatively good and people are relatively confident, and as long as the Democrats do not have a, a, a very large turnout, just an average turnout for the Democrats, they say that Trump will, uh, Trump will easily win. Yeah, again. and they've got uh, electoral college numbers up in yeah, the 350 300, range. Oh, okay. 350. I saw well, they have three scenarios. One okay. is just below 300, another one is in the 320 range, and another one at 350. 50 yes which it seems at least uh, reasonably likely at this point from what i'm seeing <laughs> on that stage i know and the embarrassment of their so-called uh, impeachment which is really a coup d'etat right and a poorly drafted one really yeah they don't really have anything and it's hard to make a what, what, what's the expression you can't make a uh, a meal out of a sausage or what's uh, that? You can't make, well, a purse out of a pig's ear. Yeah, or? there you go. Okay. Sow's ear, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and so, that's what they've got. And, um, you know, the New York Times smeared Tulsi and us here at Talking Truth to Power mm -hmm. by saying that Tulsi uh, has uh, followers that are right-wing extremists and white nats nationalists and neo-Nazis and so on. I'd go with the nationalist part of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
and um, she uh, spoke out against the uh, the regime change war. She keeps using that uh, and uh, phrase, and uh, Biden insisted insisted that we were in uh, Syria to protect the moderate rebels mm -hmm. basically well from their perspective change. that is what what we were there for uh -huh. that that is what we were there to do and and everybody was in on it mm -hmm. and including lots of republicans was yeah. in on that but what were the moderate rebels going to do yeah they exactly <laughs> regime change right exactly no the whole thing was sinister from the from the beginning and it goes back further than the actual uh, boots on the ground, our, our so-called allies on the ground, which which were just agents of ISIS. And then the, the Benghazi issue, you know, the Benghazi issue revealed that, you know, we were actually running guns into these oh, people. Oh, yeah. She did mention, she pinpointed that uh, we were involved since 2011. Mm -hmm. Good for her. Mm -hmm. And she, she understands that, uh, she understands the situation and the rest of that bunch up there don't understand a thing no. about it. Or choose not to discuss it. Yeah. One way or the other. One way or the other, yeah. yeah. So they're they're getting their orders from someone else, and um, and she did take the uh, the Drudge Poll uh, debate mm -hmm. last night. She she's way ahead of everybody. Oh, she was. Oh, yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. Because I see in the after show that uh, conservative Democrat that's on Fox, that w middle aged woman, she said Tulsi was the big loser in the debate. <laughs> oh, they would. Yeah, sure they would. Yeah. You're talking about the the black woman? No, not not her. The um, the, she's a white woman. She's a Democratic operative, uh, but she's uh, often on the. She's a Fox contributor. Another Democrat operative on, on Fox? Fox. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be a trend over there. Yes. Yeah, so, I particularly enjoyed uh, when she went uh, head to head with uh, the phony uh, Saint Buttigieg, as Tucker calls him. Yeah. Yeah. Who, uh, you know, uh, she said. You know, she confronted him. She she said, so he, he started talking about, as far as regime change wars, that sure, I want the troops out of Afghanistan, but only after long negotiations. Long negotiations. Yeah, very long negotiations. We've only been there 18, 19 years. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. So the Drudge Poll went to Gabbard by 38, almost 39%. Guess who came in second? I can't. Yang. Yes, you know. 18.5%. Buttigieg, uh, 11, almost 12, and Warren, 7% of the total number there. And it just gets worse from there. Biden was way down, 8, 9. Sanders was near the bottom. And that worthless Steyer, well, wasn't that something? <laughs> you know, I didn't listen to him. I, 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 you know, I worked last <laughs> night and I came home and I just, you know, uh, went through it, fast forwarded through a lot of it, except when Tulsi was up there and a few other times. But. Yeah, I mean, he's he is worthless. And guess who was at the very bottom of the Drudge Poll? Uh, um, Kamala? Kamala. Oh, all right. Less than 1%. She is just absolutely pathetic. And they're all pathetic. Castro was above her, then Booker. By the way, that was another one I'm on my four times over to the channel, to the forum. Uh -huh. That was the other person I saw when I went over there. So there was what Warren Booker Spartacus? and, and, and uh, Booker. So, uh, uh, and O'Rourke was uh, fifth from the bottom. So okay. just about right, actually. Yeah, he couldn't answer how he's going to take the guns away from people. He had no idea. I thought he said he was going to go door to door. Yeah, no, no, he's not going to go door to door. But it, <laughs> if anybody is outside brandishing their, their uh, AR-15, the uh, cops are going to grab it. Huh. You know, that's what he said. What are the odds? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> And he trusts the American people to do the right thing oh, and turn yeah. in their assault weapons. Yeah, like they have in Connecticut, like they have in, in other states, like they even have in Australia. We keep hearing what a big success Australia is, and it's it's only a, a, a small percentage of the firearms that are believed to be in Australia that have been turned in. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't work, no. folks. No, it is, it's, it's fantasy, and of course, uh, he's a model citizen, so he knows these things. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but any, uh, so um, the, uh, they kept, uh, another thing that they talked about, I think Buttigieg, maybe some of the others, that what will happen if we uh, can't have proxies, you know, if, if we betray our proxies, and oh, I've and heard a lot of people talking about grounds? that. Yeah, in yeah. foreign battlegrounds. Mm -hmm. Well, the only reason why you need proxies is to do regime change. Yeah. Why else would you why have would a you proxy? Have yeah. <laughs> so, so we it, don't have to spill our own blood, we're spilling other people's bloods, and that's supposed to make it okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can you believe this foreign policy we've been entertaining for for all my life? Yeah, I know. Uh, enough of that crap. Good uh, good job for Trump for starting clarifying. This. It's starting to yeah. uh, se separate out the factions and uh, lend some clarity to the debate. Absolutely, if nothing right. else. Yes, absolutely. And so uh, the um, where's the Libertarian Party this morning on that? I don't know. I I don't. <laughs> know that they've made a statement yet i mean uh, they're they're against the regime change wars but they're uh, you know yeah but they don't give him credit for initiating this foreign policy uh, yeah invitation. yeah I, the reason magazine has been silent pretty much silent about the whole thing mm -hmm. and uh, i don't see any of them you know uh, people also like daniel larison at, at, at the american conservative that have been bashing trump and to be sure i mean he's still droning people and uh, we still have troops all over the world, but today he said... 150 countries around yeah, the world. Today he said he was embarrassed to say how many countries we had troops yeah. in. Yeah, so we're starting to become a little bit embarrassed by our foreign policy? <laughs> yeah. I hope Where's so. Where's the champagne? Did I bring in any? <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe we're even listening to some of this? <laughs> no. But I think it surprised everybody, um, notwithstanding the libertarians, but I mean Romney, he's been quiet for a week since he right. came out of his gate. And... Mm -hmm. um, there has just been a, a gradual conversion, and this is this is the transformational person we we put in the Oval Office. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yes, and uh, Mitch McConnell uh, was up there and speaking to the Senate and explaining what happened in a, in a reasonable fashion. Mm -hmm. You know about how Turkey is a NATO ally, and they've been trying to. They don't want this. Uh, semi-independent state which will be sending arms they have sent arms i mean we've been given the kurds arms and guess what they've been they've been winding up in turkey uh for the uh, oh yeah yeah and so the uh name renaming them uh from the pkk to the sdf is just cosmetic they are terrorists and they're fueling terrorism in turkey. Yeah, that's his legitimacy for going in there erdogan i mean yes Howdy, Shannon Lawson here. When my family wants real barbecue, if chili, rib tips, and sweet potato fried, it's the Butcher's Kitchen Charbecue, 7689 South Virginia at Huffaker. Join Charbecue for Burrito Monday. $5 giant burros. Add your favorite beer for 10. Try Charbecue's homemade sausage on Worst Wednesday for 5 bucks. Add your favorite beer for 10. Charbecue, the Butcher's Kitchen, 7689 South Virginia, Winter's Crossing, Reno. Get in and get real Charbecue. Hey everyone, Dave Escher here introducing you to our new store, the Nevada Marketplace in the Reno Town Mall. Anchored with the Buy Nevada First gift shop, we've added over 60 micro shops, giving locals a place to set up their dream store. We are now 20,000 square feet strong, supporting over 250 local merchants with all things made in Nevada and more. We have more locals in one place than anywhere in the state, ready to help you find that perfect gift. We're open every day with easy parking at Peckham and Virginia. Go to buynevadafirst.com, your source for all things local. Call Sersen, dental because you're worth it. They can make your smile perfect. You're gonna love your new smile. Sersen Dental for a perfect smile. Sersic Dental has a $125 special that includes a cleaning, x-rays, a free Sonicare toothbrush, and a free cosmetic makeover consultation. Call 827-1113. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. Today I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad, just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. 
At age 30, Carissa finished her high school diploma. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, you can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ. A Lotus Broadcast Station. The power of radio since 1967. To join the conversation, call 844-790-TALK. That's 844-790-8255. Now, back to the show. Hello, welcome back. Talking Truth to Power. I'm your host, Brendan Trainer, my co-host, Liam Fragri. And you know, guess who showed up on TV uh, the same day as the... Uh, uh, Dem- uh, the Donkey Derby on uh, CNN. Hunter Biden showed up. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> and he carefully explained. How ironic. Yes. What are the odds? <laughs> he uh, explained that uh, he, sure, he, he got a lot of things uh, because he was Joe Biden's son. You know, back in October, uh, a lot of positions and, and money. Uh, Breitbart ran an article on October 1st about it, and and then he was hired fresh out of law school uh, to and the... And did he go uh, to Harvard? Yes, I believe so. <laughs> he uh, was hired by MBNA, a big credit card company, who had just donated 63 k to Joe Biden's re-election campaign in what appeared to be a coordinated manner designed to sidestep federal campaign finance regulation. Isn't that what they're trying to go after Trump? No, no. A lot of people make that mistake. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And then um, he was in Yale Law School. He had no banking or business experience. Uh And then he, uh, after that, uh, they... uh, that he managed to get rid of his student loan debt or something. He got rid of the uh, tens of thousands of dollars in debt he was in when he took that job. Hmm. And then uh, he was on, um, uh, and also at that time when he was on the credit card payroll, Joe Biden was writing bankruptcy reform legislation. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a coincidence. Too. Yeah, it probably means nothing. And then um, he... <laughs> Monthly <laughs> consulting fees, some claiming <laughs> upwards of a hundred thousand, and then, um, then uh, the uh, after that, the the number three uh, in the hit parade for Hunter was he uh, monetized his father's political standing on Wall Street, and then he uh, b- became uh, active on Wall Street and uh, started a hedge fund, Paradigm. Uh, investments or something, Senate Foreign Relations, Paradigm Global Advisors. Oh, so he was a inv- invi- advising the world. Yes, of course, <laughs> because you know he's Hunter, and and you're not. So but the big one was <laughs> his uh, board membership on Amtrak. Oh yes, that was the big. big you know, um, <laughs> Lunch Pail Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, his, his claim to fame is that he took the Amtrak every day to and from uh, Congress. Uh, from to Delaware his, to D.C., right? Yes, mm-hmm. right. And so uh, Hunter uh, managed to land a job on the board of directors with Amtrak. And then, uh, you know, he was very disingenuous. About, we uh, have talked a bit about the, uh, certainly last week, about the Ukraine connection. And, uh, you know, it's it's... Again, I am sh- confident that if the if the facts can truly come out, it will show the corruption there. But of course, they're going to obfuscate it because it's all involved with NATO and the Atlantic Council and their contributors. But it's it, but the IG report and the Durham report uh-huh. should result in some handcuff appropriations, mm-hmm. and that will change the the dialogue. I think that's why Nancy's backed out of a vote at this point. If she knows damn well those indictments are coming. Yes. And it, it, the timing wouldn't look good. <laughs> yeah, we keep hearing that the um, Inspector General's report is coming out very soon. Actually, maybe. as early as uh, the, the end of this week or yes. Monday. Yes. And uh, I won't be able to sleep if that. If I yeah, they shouldn't that. do it on Friday because that's a dead news day. They should, yeah. They should wait till Monday. It should be time to Monday. Absolutely. People going into the weekend, they just don't don't care. 
Okay. So uh, what he was involved with in the Ukraine was uh, actually the rehabilitation of a Ukrainian oligarch named Mykola Zlachevsky. This was the Clintonite uh, supporter, right? Right, right. He was, uh, well, all of Ukraine supported yeah, Clinton. Yeah, right. But I know. mean, he was one of the archetypical uh, types of the uh, oligarch manifest that uh, yes. was, was uh, and this is what is Trump, Trump is misrepresenting, I think, uh, to his discredit. He doesn't articulate uh, adequately the extent that he was going after the corruption in 2016. Mm -hmm. The fact that Joe Biden is now a candidate for office in 2020 is incidental to the story. He was around then and he was mixed up in the, the, the corruption that was the server of, of the DNC. And um, the way in which uh, they had cooperated with the Ukraine in order to dig up uh, dirt on Trump. So th this oligarch Mykola Zelensky was uh, involved, in, had uh, 23 million dollars frozen by the UK on corruption charges, and then he put Hunter on the board of uh, the uh, Burisma Oil and Gas Company, and for which Hunter is estimated he made 850 thousand dollars in his tenure there, and he uh, <laughs> yeah. he then. Um, uh, got involved, Hunter went to a, a, a D.C. law firm and they managed to rehabilitate Zlochevsky Good for and you, man. the U.K. canceled <laughs> his debt. And then Zlochevsky joined the Atlantic Council as well as other Ukrainian ol oligarchs like Viktor Pincus and, and numerous others, a former president of Poland. So Hunter and this former president of Poland, and please, I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. You're not? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I was looking forward to it. <laughs> but um, he, uh, they, uh, Jelochewski called them his uh, foreign trophies on the board of Burisma. Mm -hmm. And so, and uh, you know, Biden continues to insist he did nothing wrong. And actually, you could make a case for that in, in the sense that his involvement with the Atlantic Council and with NATO and with funding, uh, I mean, even Pres President Trump, once again, thank you, he is actually talking about the military industrial complex, mm -hmm. which, you know, but um, the all of these contributors to this NATO front organization, the Atlantic Council, they are the... Uh, they were ripping off the Ukraine, and the Ukraine is now uh, one of the poorest countries in the poorest, the poorest country, country in Europe. Yeah, average salary there is two hundred dollars a month. Ukraine is famous for beautiful women, and they have uh, twenty-five. It's estimated that twenty-five percent of Ukrainian women are involved in sex work to make ends meet. That's quite a number. Yeah, I mean Russia is, uh, has one hundred and fifty million people. They have they have a reputation for sex workers, but they're estimated to be three million out of one hundred and fifty. So the um, the uh, I'm all for legalizing sex work, but that is uh, that's an absurd amount, really. When you, uh, it's 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 almost like they're sex trafficking through poverty through the you know uh, impoverishing the Ukraine and causing these conditions. And it was the perfect country to for, uh, to set up shop in if you were Bill and Hillary Clinton. Oh, yeah. I just see on Drudge now that the feds are pursuing a counterintelligence investigation of Rudy that includes a fourth man arrested in his, uh, the probe of his associates. Mm. So you know those indictments are coming. Yeah. People are going to be cuffed. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, man, this is going to get good. We're going to see some perp walks. Huh? Yeah, you may as well turn off for your, uh, or forget the idea of going out to a film because uh, this <laughs> is going to be on your TVs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, you know, so by... By Joe Biden did nothing wrong in the sense that he was a proponent of the empire and globalist yeah, empire. So yeah. he believes he probably believes he did nothing wrong. Absolutely, except he does. impoverish this because that's always the way it was. Yeah, exactly, and um, build up NATO and make uh, money for uh, the the donors to the to the Atlantic Council and, and these and wobbly, himself and his family. You know, and I, it's one thing to blame these people, and, and I do, but I'm, I'm really more disappointed with the wobbly need Republicans right? who don't stand up and, I, and correct the narrative that is obviously being imposed by the propaganda wing of the Democratic Party via CNN and MSNBC and all that, because it was, it's so easy. I mean, half the time I wish I was 
at those tables where they're discussing these issues because I could clarify and get to the point and they can go to a commercial. Right. You know what I'm saying? It would be so easy to call their bluff. And I am, so far, I believe that President Trump is wearing them down. I mean, they did react uh, extremely uh, violently uh, to the news about Turkey's incursion. Uh, but um, I think it's quieting down. Like I said, Mitch McConnell has been quieting it down and so on. Well, McConnell has said, you know, if they send up articles, it, they're dead on arrival. Mm -hmm. And they should be dead on arrival. There's nothing oh, yeah. there. Right. And the American people know this. You mm -hmm. know? There was a story today, I think uh, an, a, a journalist of the left had... Um, Produced an article discussing what's uh, the 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 milieu of Ohio, of all places. You know what's going on on the street in Ohio, and uh, they're not interested. Mm -hmm. And I think Kasich said this the other day. He was speaking to somebody, John Kasich. Yeah, he's got a new book out. He's oh. not going to vote for Trump in 2020. Oh no. But but he says the impeachment thing is a waste of time. This is ridiculous, and it reflects the opinion on the ground in Ohio that uh, this this thing is there's nothing there this is this is a vacuum waiting waiting for, for a match to explode <laughs> it's just um, I, uh, I, I and I think someone else uh, oh I think Rand Paul has said that when it gets to the the Senate it's dead on arrival so yeah. it's not just McConnell but is there anything more to this story that that they can come up what what's left for them to contrive in their narrative against Trump Oh, oh well, I I don't know. I mean, he, who who would have thought of a whistleblower? I didn't. Yeah, and you know these aren't really whistleblowers. Let's face it. I mean, the real whistleblowers are people like Edward Snowden and Chelsea Manning yeah, and good point. John Kiriakou. These are, uh, you know, we didn't uh, impeach Nixon because he bombed Laos. We we impeached Nixon because he had the temerity to attack the other faction of the ruling party with the Watergate break-in. Yeah, and had the courage to do so. Mm -hmm. Ready for a live game of Clue? For nearly 30 years, Fun Time Theater has held private and monthly dinner murder mysteries. Each night is different, and each event includes dinner and a show. You're the detective, and your job is to figure out who did what to who and why. At the end of the night, a super sleuth and not so super sleuth are awarded prizes. This is a great event for a birthday or holiday party and team building events for your office. Visit FunTimeTheater.com to make your reservations and use promo code RADIO for $5 off each admission. Are you caring for an older person or a loved one who needs assistance? Paragon Home Resources can help you maintain their independent living for as long as possible anywhere in the United States. We offer property management services to deal with all facets of maintaining the current home. We can also assist with obtaining a reverse mortgage to free up home equity to pay for home care and other needs. And should your loved one require assisted living or a move-in with a family member, we can handle the details of selling the home for the best possible price. Paragon Home Resources can assist with helping you sort belongings to determine which will be kept and those that require an estate sale or donation to charity. Your Paragon Home Resources coordinator will be accessible through a convenient toll-free number. As part of our service, you'll get a needs assessment to determine the services that are necessary. Caring for a loved one doesn't have to be stressful. Call Paragon Home Resources to learn more, 1-855-474-7227, or visit us at ParagonHomeResources.com. Business owners and entrepreneurs know that good information is priceless. Just one great idea can make all the difference. Hi, this is Joe Morabito, host of CEO Business Mind. Each week, in one fast-paced hour, we share lots of proven tips and ideas to help you be more successful in business. Don't miss a minute of CEO Business Mind with me, Joe Morabito, right here on 1180 AM KCKQ. Wynema Ranch Wild Horse Sanctuary, a preserve dedicated to keeping America's wild mustangs and burros running free. Wynema Ranch, 29 miles north of Reno near Hallelujah Junction. An amazing sight to visit. Over 130 of God's majestic animals at home on the range. Experience the beauty and wonder. Give at WynemaRanch.com. That's W-Y-N-E-M-A Ranch.com. Or call 775-384-4444. Wynema Ranch. Join in and join the fun and be a part of something bigger. 
join us for our second annual Deer and Doggy Days event in Carson City, 637 South Stewart Street from 10 to 2 on October 12th. Willow Bill Reindeer Project, RoofRiders.org, and Business Connections with Anita will be there and we'll have food, entertainment, and much more. So bring the kids, bring the dog, and have a great time with us. This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus Broadcast Station, the power of radio since 1967. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775 237 2266. Now back to the show. Hey, welcome back to Talking Truth to Power. I'm Brendan Trainer, and along with me is today is Leland Fagri. And uh, we've been talking quite a bit today, and we should really touch <laughs> on uh, what's going on in Europe with uh, Brexit. Is there anything and, going on in Europe? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think that uh, they, England may finally uh, extricate itself from another entangling alliance, although we're not entirely sure yet. But we saw Boris meeting with the uh, president of uh, Ireland, and uh, the biggest obstacle is still what to do about uh, the customs uh, in Ireland. Customs whether they'll Union. Be, yeah, mm -hmm. whether there'll be a hard border or a soft border or some other kind of compromise uh, to keep, uh, uh, you know, inflaming the situation there between Northern and Southern Ireland. And uh, the um, uh, so he's going to meet on Saturday, I believe it is Saturday, with the EU representatives. That's the next, next yeah. meeting, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, expectations have been rising and falling and rising and falling, but then he's, he still has another couple of weeks and they have to uh, pull out by Halloween if they're going to do it on time and with a deal. or with a deal or, or, or if they're going to do it with no deal. Right. So um, we're getting uh, the the gob the EU goblins are all set to rise and uh, the the witches of Brussels are getting their broomsticks ready to see if that's going to um, happen or not. Well, so. I think it's a fait accompli. The uh, Junker has said so. The only question is exactly how it is done. Uh, how soft of a, an arrangement it is and how hard of it is that it is becomes and uh, they will still need to secure the agreement of the UK Parliament is, yes. is the problem yeah. uh, if uh, they go that route and there's plenty of opposition there I mean even some of his closest allies in the past are standing up to him because they're they're, they're uh, globalists. globalists yes exactly and the um, uh, so the the Labour Party is is split. Some of them are Remainers, some of them are Brexiters, but with a, only with a deal. The and Lib and Dems, of course, are against it. They want to stay in. And Scotland doesn't want anything to do with it. Right. So yes. Scotland, you know, Scotland is hoping to use the opportunity to once again try to declare their independence. Because they're nationalists. Yes. So right. let them go. Exactly. Uh, you know? And if they want to cozy up to Europe or stay within the Union, then they, that's their, their call. That's their prerogative. Yes. Uh, nobody's saying you can't do the globalist things. Only, the only thing is you shouldn't be uh, forced to if, if it's not good for the country. And, and Chatham House has a lot of influence over the... Um, the uh, process as we're watching it play out as we speak and Chatham House of course is the the new mantle the new brand for the Royal Institute of International Affairs which was the origins of the Council on Foreign Relations here in the United States and Cecil Rhodes and Cecil the Rhodes, whole British imperialism the British round uh, table groups, right yeah uh -huh. all of them feeding into Chatham House and they see their plans their hundred year old plans which most mm -hmm. Americans don't even know about Right. because the media won't talk about it and politicians are afraid to talk about it, uh, are uh, upended by this plan to extricate themselves from the pan-European arrangement that eff effectively was launched after the Second World War. That's how far back this goes. Oh, I think if Chatham House, well, Chatham, the round well, table goes back to the oh, 19th century. No, no, century, I, meant, yeah. I meant the plan for a, a European, no, bo a borderless you're, Europe. Your borderless Europe, yeah. yeah. So... Um, the um, so uh, Chatham House uh, again. Most Americans are not that familiar with it, unfortunately. And uh, the C after nine eleven, the CIA invented the term conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> 
So this is considered just one of those conspiracy theories that us right-wing white nationalists, Nazi fiends, and, and uh, extremists are talk that the New York Times likes to call us yeah. are, are, are pushing. But it's the truth. And it, it, it also infects Canada. Uh, it sounds so sophisticated to describe it as a theory, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, like there's really nothing to it in... It's an intangible that uh, you're just mm -hmm. making up out of, you know, political fantasy. Right. And, yeah, but, well, you know, it's like the theory of gravity. You can't Sooner really later, prove it, but it's there. Sooner or later. Sooner or later, it's going to come down on you. That which is self-evident uh, becomes yeah. obvious. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the um, the CFR and the all of these um, uh, organizations, uh, we have the a foundation for the defense of democracies. That's another neocon one there. The oh, it's hard to find a group that is not entangled by the trend of globalism. Yes. I mean, it, the, it would just almost uh, defy the odds to find mm -hmm. one that is not. That's how long they've been at this. A century. Yes. Know, they've been at it for a century. Yes. So, and, um, you know, the, um, so... Again, if, if 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 Brexit happens and uh, England is free of uh, the uh, the EU, and uh, Nigel Farage is able to retire with mission accomplished, <laughs> uh, that will be a new uh, a new dawn, a new striking uh, out, and uh, another success for those of us who are opposed to this entanglement. Right, and the founding fathers would be proud of us for yes. this fight. Yeah. After all, our own independence, war for independence, was to buck that trend of globalism, what they called cosmopolitanism in their day. It's the same concept, just using a different term. Right. And uh, they would be um, quite excited about what we're accomplishing here. Yes. With our fearless leader, <laughs> Donald J. Trump. <laughs> yes, the the Trumpster. The, yep. Yes, and the, uh, the orange man, which, orange man bad. Which is what excited me when he came down the escalator. Because I didn't really know anything about him. I never saw his show. You know, I mean, he's been around as a property mogul for years. But I, I didn't pay any attention to that guy. I'm really kind of celebrity unconscious when it comes to that stuff. But when he stood at the lectern and he began to describe his platform for the presidency, it included this non-globalist approach to foreign policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hold the phone. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah, okay. Because this is what needed to happen. And right. I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime. That we have not had an American in the Oval Office in my lifetime. Right. And that would include Ronald Reagan. Okay. And, um, you know, I think that's that's what it happened to me. But I also uh, decided to vote for him uh, because of the fact that he, just because he said, uh, why shouldn't we be friends with Russia? And that is so, I mean, even in the debate last night, I mean, Klobuchar was saying, I don't believe there's a moral equivalency between America and Russia. You know, it's all of this exceptionalism and we are the best and everybody else is uh, under, uh, morally inferior to us. And uh, we're always a force for good in the world. And we have to make the world in our image. Yes. That whole nonsense. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If they want to be, we can set the example. If they want to be like us, we're happy to have them join, you know. Right. But this imposition. Oh, yes. Military imposition, mm -hmm. the entanglement. 150 countries around the world we have troops in. I know. Honestly, for, pourquoi? I know. Um, why are we? You know, NATO. It, the the saying for NATO was, NATO was found to keep America in, Russia out, and Germany down, mm -hmm. and that's and that's the way it's been for its entire existence. And since you have invoked NATO, the effect here is the tarnishing of the image, not only of the entanglement, but also of specifically of Erdogan in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And there, we could see the beginning of a trend towards letting Turkey go from the alliance, if not the entire alliance itself. Right. Wouldn't that be exciting? Yes. And uh, Trump was once again bad-mouthing uh, NATO uh, indirectly. He didn't mm -hmm. mention him by name, but... Well, he went after him initially by, yeah. by, re by requiring that they pony up. Right. And he still, he was hitting on that again today yeah. with, with the Italian uh, foreign, foreign minister. minister was here, yeah. If we're going to protect them, they ought to pay for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, we really shouldn't be protecting no. them either. We nope. shouldn't be putting our people in harm's way like that, which is what he's starting to say now. The, 
The only thing I have to say is that Tulsi uh, spoke out against the sanctions as well, and Donald doesn't seem to realize or isn't saying that sanctions kill people too. Not just armies and bombs, but sanctions uh, kill tens of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. He won't admit to that so It's far. the lesser of the two evils, and I think that's why he uh, seeks to use it to the extent that it's possible, and that, that to the extent that it has worked with China is pretty exemplary. Okay. And, and uh, you know, we've yet to see it play out in detail, but mm -hmm. he announced two days ago that such a, a big picture plan, a, a large plan for uh, resolving this tariff crisis is in the wings. And uh, Turkey and Iran are pulling out of uh, the dollar. They're trading, they're going to be trading in uh, the local currencies and uh, maybe someday in gold because they, they have a, they've been buying up gold like crazy. So has Hungary. Uh, Speaking of gold, you know what the new gold standard is? No. What is the new gold standard? <laughs> well, Elizabeth uh, uh, Warren said it last night. She said it's the, uh, it's the health care plan. It's the Medicare, Medi-Cal, Medicare for all. Oh, that's the new gold standard. That's that's, the, that's, what, that's what Pocahontas <laughs> said. <laughs> These people really understand money well, don't they? Yeah. I mean, honestly. I mean, I mean she might as well be back selling Manhattan for twenty-four dollars worth of uh, shells and wampum, and she yeah, does she, wampum. Yeah, she has no concept. They they think that money grows on trees, and it has been growing on trees for a while. Yeah. But it's that's got to stop sooner or later. It's got to stop. And, and I think the discussion of deficit spending and the national debt and all servicing of the debt will begin in Trump's second term. That yes. it's going to get serious. Yes. It has to get serious. It has to get serious. This is not America. Well, no, speaking of serious. Like, yeah, it looks like it's another uh, session come to an end. And uh, please uh, tune in. Uh, catch us uh, on our Facebook page, Talking Truth to Power. We live stream there. And uh, we are here every Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Please join us. For your listening pleasure. I spend a lot of time in the garage, but even more time in the rain, sleet, and mud. In 95, I helped tow your moving trailer. In 05, I helped you get out of a ditch. Yeah, I know I'm a bit rusty, and sadly in 09, it was sparks from me, your handy chains dragging behind your truck that accidentally started a wildfire. Sparks from dragging chains can start a wildfire. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. One in three adults in America have pre-diabetes, but most don't know it. To let people know it can be reversed before it becomes type 2 diabetes, professional basketball player Julius Randle is doing everything in reverse. I'm only dunking with reverse windmills. I drove the whole way to practice in reverse. I don't recommend it. This move's called the reverse shuffle. I do recommend it. And it took me months to learn how to speak in reverse, like this. <clears throat> Here's 10 almost for diabetes type 2 with living Ben has my mom. In other words, my mom has been living with type 2 diabetes for almost 10 years. So together, we want to say to the 84 million Americans at risk, exercise and healthy eating can help reverse prediabetes. Start by taking a simple one-minute risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. <laughs> Betty can't say that in reverse. This is America Matters Media Radio, heard worldwide on the web at americamatters.us and on K.